Presidential debates. It's always nice to see the candidates stutter, stammer, and spit their way through the questions and still never answer them. In my video today, I will be asking for political help from both our presidential candidates, President Biden and President Trump. I am asking for help with a problem that's ravaging my community and headed for yours. This problem is so pervasive, entrenched, and prominent in the black community that it now defines our culture. With overwhelming statistical, professional, and educational proof, prominent aspects of black culture causes or contributes to mental illness. Mr. Presidents, we need some help over here. They say that society is the logical management of human emotions. My community has the most violent and impulsive culture in America. A killer is not born, he is raised. Many of our kids raise themselves. Now tell me, what's more dangerous than a kid that's raised to his own understanding? Most of their understanding comes from the rap music that they listen to all day, every day. And rap music causes mental illness. They say that music can tame the most savage beast. If that's true, music can also make the most tame into a savage beast. Remember the Uncle Luke 2 Live Crew censorship case of 1992. In 1992, the U.S. government concluded that because rap music is an art, it is not obscene. Even though it is profane and misogynistic, 32 years later, we have overwhelming proof that rap music is far worse than being simply obscene. Mr. President, our government has always stepped in and helped us with problems that have been proven to be dangerous to our society. Cigarettes, drugs, alcohol, life, climate change. Books have been removed from school libraries. They were deemed bad for our kids. 80% of black juveniles arrested have a diagnosable mental illness. Mr. President, I compare certain types of rap music to mind abortion that's crossing all borders. Yes, this mental illness plague is coming to a neighborhood near you. I'm not seeking help with all rap music, just the negative gangster type that causes mental illness. And the age group affected the most with this mental illness is ages 12 through 34. You see, when you see spending three to five years in prison as a rite of passage, you must be mentally ill. When you see the good people in your community as nothing more than prey, you have to be mentally ill to go to school and assimilate more to the prison culture than the job culture. You have to be mentally ill to choose a thug life over a free education. You have to be mentally ill to kill someone that you've known your whole life over a small, trivial spat. You have to be mentally ill when the only opportunities that you see come through violent means. You have to be mentally ill. I have a friend with 40 years in LA County probation. You should hear the discussions we've had about the mental illness that's come across his desk over these past 40 years. I have somebody that's very dear to me. That's a doctor that works in the Atlanta Fulton County jail system in intake and he says that 85% of the people mostly black 99% that come through his intake unit have 
of diagnosable mental illness. Everyone that knows a teacher from one of our major cities, school districts, they will tell you that the violent, mentally ill students affect 65% of the learning. Lastly, you can ask any guy ages 18 to 50 that has lived that mentally ill, gangster, violent life. They would tell you that mental illness is pervasive and plagues the black community. The preamble talks about securing the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. As I watched the debate, I thought to myself, many of the things that my community leaders want from this upcoming election, the black community won't be able to receive because many of our youth won't have the mental faculties to be competitive. Helping us get rid of this gangster type rap music, whether creatively or straightforwardly, will greatly help us rebuild. Thanks for your time. Please subscribe and hit the like button.